Welcome to uh, week four and our last part of our lecture of interpretation of arterial blood gases. I'm sure you've learned this before, so this is just going to be a high level overview. So arterial blood gas. So an ABG or an arterial blood gas is a blood test that measures the pH, which is the acidity or the alkalinity and the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood. Blood for an ABG is taken from an artery, whereas most other blood tests are done on a sample of blood taken from a vein. The test is done to monitor several, several conditions that can cause serious health complications, especially to critically ill individuals. So just going over the acid base, the nor um, a little bit more detail. So what is the pH? Again, it's measurement of the acidity or alkalinity of the blood. It's important to understand that the pH is inversely proportional to the number of potassium ions. So the higher the potassium ions, the more acidic the blood is going to be, and you're going to have a lower pH level. So the, the, the more potassium, sorry, the more hydrogen ions, the lower the pH, the less hydrogen ions, the higher the pH, and normal pH is between 7.35 to 7.45, and the midpoint is 7.4. Your arterial blood gas values, again, the pH is between 7.35 to 7.45. Your PO2 is a normal, is between 80 to 100 milligrams of mercury. Um, a saturation is, a saturation of oxygen is greater to or equal to 95%, that's normal. Your PaCO2 is 35 to 45. And your bicarb, your HCO3 is 22 to 26. Although your textbook describes it as 21 to 28, we're going to go with the 22 to 26. So just reviewing arterial blood gas values, your pH should be between 7.35 to 7.45. Your PaO2 is between 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. Your SaO2, which can only be found during an arterial blood gas, is greater to or equal to 95%. The one that you do with a pulse oximeter is the SpO2, saturation in the um, peripheral oxygen, not the arterial oxygen, which is the A. Your PaCO2 is 35 to 45, and your bicarb HCO2, sorry, your HCO3 is 22 to 26 millimeters, uh, millimoles per liter. Now in your text, it defines HCO, HCO3 or your bicarb as 21 to 28, but most references use the 22 to 26, and that's what we will use. So when you're looking at here, obviously, or maybe not obviously, this is gonna show your acidic content, and this is gonna show your base or your alk uh, alkaline content in your, in your body. So why do we care? Well, if the pH is too high or too low, the speed of chemical reactions becomes inappropriate for proper cell functioning. So think back to our arrhythmias and we talked about the sodium potassium pump. So that's one chemical reaction or cell functioning that can be disturbed with a wonky abnormal pH. And then persistent alterations in pH will lead to signs and symptoms, illness, and possible death as homeostasis is not maintained. So there's two very important systems that are, are effective in maintaining the acid-base balance and hence a homeostasis. And they are called our buffering systems. And it's the respiratory system and the renal system. So the respiratory system is the fast system. So CO2 is carried in blood to the lungs. If our body has an excess of CO2, it binds with water to produce carbonic acid. And the way we can get rid of carbonic acid and hydrogen ions or acid in the body is by increasing the depth and rate of our respirations. And so the level of carbonic acid triggers, triggers the lungs to either increase or decrease the rate or depth of breathing. And then compensation begins within one to three minutes. And so if you are in a situation where your body is acidic, so you've got a low pH, what will happen is your lungs will try, will increase their rate and depth of breathing to try and blow off carbonic acid. If you're in a situation where you are hyperventilating, 
then you what will happen is the carbonic acids will actually be low because you are blowing off a lot of acid and your body goes into an alkaline state so the respiratory system it's going to say hey stop but we've got to slow down our breathing we've got to hold on to some of our acid because we're in an alkaline state and that how that's how it buffers it out the renal system is a little bit slower and it it helps by either retaining or excreting um, bicarb and so if the blood pH decreases, so remember it decreases is, it was gonna be acidic, the kidneys will retain or hold on to bicarb because they wanna level it out. If the pH increases, we're in an alkaline state, so the kidney will excrete bicarb through the urine, which will bring our pH down into a normal range. But this system is a little bit slower and it may take hours or days to compensate. So again, just an overview, the lungs and the kidneys are the primary buffer systems. It's a body's attempt to bring the pH back to normal. In the lungs, they can either retain or blow off CO2, which is carbonic acid because it combines with water. In the kidneys, they can either retain or excrete bicarb. The pH returns to, to normal, hopefully, which is fully compensated. But if the pH is not normal, but there's some evidence of compensation, it, it's a partially compensated state. And we'll review that when we review reading ABGs. So just a little bit about acid-base imbalances. So respiratory acidosis, remember acidosis, think about holding on to that CO2. So this is gonna be someone that is hypoventilating. So think of the individuals who could be hypoventilating. We're gonna talk about that in the next slide, some um, ideas. And so what, what's happening in this state is you're holding on to CO2. So you have an increase in carbonic acid, you have an increase in hydrogen ions, meaning your pH is on the lower end. Respiratory alkalosis means that you've got an excessive loss of CO2. We're getting rid of a lot of acid. And so this is someone who's hyperventilating. So you're gonna have a decreased hydrogen ions, which means an increase in pH. Remember, it's an inverse relationship. So greater than 7.45. Metabolic acidosis is looking at the bicarb. So acidosis is going to be a decrease in bicarb in, in the blood. And so um, in those cases, you would have an increase in hydrogen ions, decrease in pH, so 7.35 under. And then metabolic alkalosis is an increase in bicarb in the blood. And it's gonna show as a decrease in hydrogen ions or an increase in pH which would be greater than 7.45. Okay, so let's go through acid-base imbalances and some disorders that cause the different uh, imbalances. Respiratory acidosis, again, is too much carbonic acid, and it usually comes from an individual that is hypoventilating. So conditions that affect the pulmonary function could be your COPDs, your pneumonia, atelectasis is a a collapse of the alveoli. Depression of the respiratory system could be through an opioid overdose or a head injury affecting the respiratory center in the brain. Post-op pain and receiving narcotics and maybe too much narcotic. And conditions that alter or affect the chest wall. So it could be such things as diseases that affect the innervation of the chest wall, such as the Guillain-Barre uh, syndrome or polio. And then any traumas, so thoracic trauma, a flail chest, something from maybe a motor vehicle accident or a gunshot wound, something like that. Hyperventilation is too much carbonic acid. So this could be through stimulation of the central nervous system. So you're hyperventilating, so anxiety, fear. Encephalitis is an infection of the central nervous system, the meninges. ASA poisoning. ASA poisoning, again, is a acid and it can cause your body to hyperventilate to get rid of that acid. Maybe it's a reflex of the central nervous system. So such things as hypoxia will stimulate hyperventilation in a reflex mechanism. So if someone that is in congestive heart failure or respiratory um, infection, it could actually go to the opposite and, and be a reflex. A compensatory mechanism. And then mechanical hyperventilation, so over breathing with the ventilator. Metabolic acid is too much metabolic acid or bicarb loss. 
So excessive production or intake of metabolic acid or excessive loss of bicarb. So such things as an increased production or an increase of metabolic acid through ASA. I keep talking about ASA because ASA overdose is a medical emergency because of this metabolic acidosis. Other things are diabetic ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis, so when your tissues go into anoxia, with a, um, if you have a tissue that's dying, say you are involved in a car accident and you have a limb that is not getting any perfusion and it goes into tissue anoxia, it starts to produce lactic acid. And then starvation is the breakdown of ketones. So you get ketone acidosis. Maybe it's a decrease in the excretion of metabolic acid. So through the kidneys not working well, so you have oliguria, so a decrease or no urine output. And then bicarb loss through diarrhea or intestinal drainage. Metabolic alkalosis is too little metabolic um, acid or an increase in base. So you get that through um, bicarb excess. And so with diuretics, it gets rid of a lot of urine and you accumulate, you hold on to the bicarb. Maybe there's an excessive intake of bicarb through um, such things as um, anti-ulcer medication to um, you know the Tums that people take, the anti-ulcer medications. Excessive loss of metabolic acid. So you're vomiting. Um, NG, NG tube without replacing the electrolytes are important ones here. So let's look at interpreting the ABGs. So the pH tells us if the patient is acidotic or alkalotic. The PCO2 and the bicarb tells us where the abnormality is coming from, whether it's from the lungs or from metabolic, and whether or not there's compensation. And the PO2 and the SAO2 tell us about oxygenation. So we're going to look at these components separately to avoid confusion, but that's basically what each of the component is going to tell you. So I know, you, know you've probably learned about how to interpret ABGs different ways. I like the tic-tac-toe method. You may have been taught this method, but this is the article that I posted this week, and it's a very easy way to interpret ABGs. So step one is obviously knowing the normal results. And so we've gone through this already, the importance of understanding the normal results, because that is where you work from. Step two is determining if the pH is um, acidosis or alkalosis. And so, you know, the pH level of a human should be between 7.35 to 7.45. And the human body is constantly striving to keep the pH in balance through homeostasis and uh, those two buffer systems. Again, the pH below 7.35 is acidosis and above 7.45 is alkalosis. Next, you're going to determine if the acid base is respiratory or metabolic. So again, remember that anything related to the PC, PACO2 that's out of whack represents a respiratory problem, and the bicarb represents a metabolic problem. Step four is remember Rome. Respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. So what that means is think about your pH. So if you have an increased pH, that means that it is alkalosis. So that would mean that your PCO2 is going to be decreased. Think about your carbonic acid. Think PCO2, think, think carbonic acid. If you have a decreased pH, so you are acidotic, you're going to have an increased PCO2. So think about carbonic acid again as acidosis. So respiratory is opposite. When you have an increased pH, you're going to have a decrease in your PCO2. So it's opposite. Metabolic is equal. If you have an increase in pH, you're going to have an increase in bicarb, alkalosis. If you have a decreased pH, you have a decreased bicarb as acidosis. So you have to remember Rome. Very important. So steps the tic-tac-toe. So all you have to do is make a blank chart similar to this. So you've got your tic-tac-toe. You put acid, acidic, normal, and basic on your tic-tac-toe or acid normal base. And then you start plotting. So you mark the chart. So this is our ABG. We've got the pH of 7.26. Our 
PaCO2 is 32 and our bicarb is 18. So let's start plotting these. So our pH was 7.26. So we know that is on the lower end of the scale. So it's acidic. So it's going to go on the acidic side. Our PaCO2, remember that it is between um, 35 and 45. And so this is low. So if it's low, it is the opposite. So it's a base. So um, remember Rome. If it's um, if the PaCO2 is low, that means think carbonic acid, less acid. So it's going to be a base. And our our bicarb is 18. Remember, it's 22 to 20, 26. So our bicarb is on the low side. So it's not high. If it was high, it would be base, a lot of bicarb, but it's low. So we got less bicarb. So it's going on the basic side. And so that's how you plot them. So your chart should look like this. So next we match them up. So we can see on the acidic side, we have our pH and our bicarb, and we know bicarb is metabolic. And so this example would be metabolic acidosis. Next, we need to figure out compensation or not. So what is the body doing to compensate? There are three types, compensated, partially compensated, and uncompensated. So the first, first thing you do is look at the pH. Is it normal or abnormal? If it's normal, it's compensated. That means that the buffering system of the renal system and the respiratory system are working to bring that pH back into its normal range. Typically, when it's compensated, the bicarb and the PaO2 will be out of whack because they're working really hard to bring that pH back to normal. So in our situation here, we look at where is the pH. It's not in the normal range, so it's not compensated. We have a metabolic acidosis, and what we want to see is that the PaCO2 is working in opposite to the metabolic acidosis to try and bring our system back to be fully compensated. We're not there yet, but this is a good direction that we're heading is that we've got the PaCO2 working opposite to the acidic to try and balance things out to have a normal acid-base balance. So let's look at a couple of other examples. So if we do the tic-tac-toe method here, we have a pH of 7.44. That's normal. Our bicarb was 21, which is on the lower side, and so it goes on the acidic side. And our PaCO2 was also on the low side. And remember, Rome is opposite, so it's actually on the basic side. So this one, we have a respiratory alkalosis. Why do, how do we say that it's a respiratory alkalosis? Well, we look at the pH. It's 7.44. That's really more to the alkalotic side. If we were actually to look at the range, it's more to the alkalotic side. And which other one is close to the alkalotic side? It's respiratory. So this is respiratory alkalosis. And so we want to see, is it compensated or not compensated? Well, we can see it is compensated because our pH is back to normal. And we have a bicarb on this side that's trying to buffer the effects of this alkalosis. So that's a respiratory alkalosis compensated. Let's look at this one. So we have our pH is 7.1. So we know that is acidic. Our bicarb is 18. We also know that's low and it's acidic. And our PaCO2 is between 35 and 45, so that's actually normal. So where is our pH? So that's metabolic acidosis. Where is our pH? Well, our pH is still on the acidic side. It's not normal. We had hoped that this PaCO2 would be over in the basic side to try and compensate for this metabolic acidosis, but it's not. And so right now, then, we have a metabolic acidosis that's uncompensated because our pH is still normal. 
So we will review more of these in class, in our Zoom class. So bring any of your questions for the past three lectures and we will discuss them in our one hour Zoom class. See you then.